Welcome to Licking Non-Vanilla, a sex-positive hour of talk about kink, sexual mores, and writing dirty words. So grab a cup of cocoa, your favorite easy chair, and the lube as we go sailing into the dark, sweet waters of all things naughty. On Licking Non-Vanilla, with your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr. and M. Christian. Hey kids, you've reached Licking Non-Vanilla with me, uh, Ralph Greco Jr. And across the aisle, across the world, but not across from my heart, is... Aww. Is Chris, otherwise known as M. Christian, from the wilds of Eugene, Oregon. Wilds, and he's right, it is wild out there. Any place Chris is, it's wild. <laughs> um, we're lucky today to be talking to Josh Ortiz, and I, and I emphasize the tease because Josh is a tease when it comes to what he's doing out there. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, the, he's the main dude here at, uh, at XR Brands, and we're going to get into what they do. Uh, Josh actually was nice enough to send us their catalog, and Chris and I were just busting him about, it is one hell of a thick, long, big catalog. <laughs> Bulging. Nice <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you got a lot of girth in your catalog. Um, Indeed. <laughs> so, so you, you pride yourself on being pretty nasty with the stuff you present. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Good. We don't want any. We don't want any. Um, we don't want any uh, shirking violets here. We want. We want. You know the real deal. <laughs> on looking on vanilla. You better clutch Josh. your pearls. <laughs> So t- tell us how you developed, or you know how a nice girl, a nice girl guy like you got into this. But uh, how, how did it, how did you come into into starting to, you know, uh, be a purveyor of uh, sexual paraphernalia, as they say? Uh, you know, it's it's uh, one of those things where it kind of was an accidental thing that I ended up being really just ridiculously good at unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. I'm not, and I'm not really good at much else. So it really uh, it really w- worked out. Being mm-hmm. a uh, a trans masculine person and being a sex educator by trade, mm-hmm. uh, you know when. I realized as someone that's a sex educator, someone that is a pro dom and kinky, you know, the Mm. majority of people don't really know how to not blow their butthole out. Uh, So if we're going (laughs) to sell really hard stuff, we need to make sure we have someone that knows how to keep your butthole intact using that really hard stuff. Makes sense. Uh, And it just kind of, it just kind of clicked, man. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's very impressive. I have to say. Yeah. It's a hell of a catalog, isn't it, Chris? Yeah. Um, Wonderful. Josh, how long have, how long have you you been doing this? You've been it, this has been XR has been in existence. XR has been in existence for twenty one years. Wow. Uh, we started wow. Yeah, for a long time. Started in really hardcore kink and fetish, and that's okay. what we do really really well. Yeah. Okay. So that's you would say that's your specialty then. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so you know, Chris, we, we we're looking at the catalog here, and I'm thinking about days gone by and. And days now, you know, um, I, I always I always wonder, like, Josh, it, it, have you seen and I'm, I'm sure you have Chris and I have seen this, the, the progression of certain toys becoming more popular in the culture than others. But absolutely. But across the board, like when, when, when Chris and I would say the, the normal non vanilla world, but in the kink world, have you seen that as well? Absolutely. You know, honestly, kink has been in a constant uptick for a while. Uh, Mm -hmm. It definitely spiked with the help of Fifty Shades of Grey. Not really a movie that those of us in the kink scene necessarily uh, applaud as factual, but it did what it was supposed to do, which is get a bunch of people horny. Right, exactly. A bunch of housewives, like, you know, wet in a way they never had been before. Exactly. Yep. Yep. exactly. So, so, Josh, given that, then following, what would you say right now is, is the popular toys? Is there a genre, if we can even say genre, but if there's a, a type of toy that seems to be more popular than others at the moment? There's a couple. Right now, some of the stuff that really blows up is stuff that is aesthetically or video pleasing. Mm. A lot of people are kind of uh, taking in uh, to account their own control over their sexuality. So they're embracing more cam usage and uh, doing more 
porn or am- amateur porn. So things that look cute on camera do mm-hmm. really, really mm-hmm. well. Like that rose that went viral on TikTok mm-hmm. uh, just a couple of months ago, those clitoral roses, those type of things, as mm-hmm. well as super hardcore, like cock and ball torture stuff mm-hmm. does fantastic. Wow. Well, that's, you know, I mean, now that surprises me. I mean, I, the, the video stuff doesn't surprise me. The cock and ball stuff definitely surprises me. <laughs> You know, it's because most uh, guys don't know how much a uh, cock and balls cost to replace. I think if they did, <laughs> thank you for to go ahead. And, uh, yeah, you know. it's, de- it's definitely, you know, uh, Chris and I, we've gone far and wide for replacements. And it's, you know, it's a lot. It takes a lot. You know? <laughs> it's, it uh, ain't easy. Trust no, me. It's quite, I, quite, the, the quite the journey. Uh, <laughs> um, so, see. You know, selling as you do, I'm assuming you you do a good percentage of your selling on online, right? Right. We have okay. uh, a great following online. We also have a really good, sturdy following uh, in our most of our local brick and mortars throughout the country. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, so how how spread out are you uh, in in that regard? Quite actually, uh, you know, pre COVID, my job was uh, on the road about 80% of the year traveling and teaching in the majority of brick and mortar stores that carry our products. And there are wow. a lot of them. Uh, wow, that's great. Yeah, that's but, you know, King yeah. Is, is one of those things that folks are getting more comfortable asking about. Quite frankly, we're all getting ready to die from a virus any minute anyway. We may, yeah, well right. So, if you might, in the process, you know, might, might as well torture our cocks in the process. <laughs> um, so, so did, is there anywhere in the country you found had a concentration of interest uh, over any other? The Bible Belt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All day long. The Bible Belt. I spent a lot of time in some of the most holy of places, and they are the nastiest. It's my favorite. Absolutely Isn't that amazing, favorite. Chris? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've, we've, you know, it's amazing to, to, you know, what people are, are claiming they're doing and what they're really doing behind those closed doors and on a Saturday night before the Sunday that they go to church, you know. I'm and, uh, telling you, I... Yeah. When it comes to really hardcore stuff, uh, the you know the more conservative the area, the yeah. the more really big, large, you know, seventeen inch <laughs> horse cock that may be selling. Uh, when there's nothing but churches and Dollar Generals around. All right. Well, you know, it's a come to Jesus moment, as they say. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just jump in here. Because- I had a friend once who had like a monster, you know, dildo, and the name of it was Mr. Jesus, sir. Um, So it's like, uh, but yeah, that's not surprising because we've had a couple of guests on before who say like, where are you popular? And it's always like the Bible Belt. So it's like, I I mean, look at any study of like porn. It's like, that's where people are consuming it, which is so funny. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, where you're suppressed and where you where you have uh, limitations is where you most want to get out and explore, and at least in your your bedroom, you know. Oh, you know, absolutely. So definitely yeah. areas where, uh, you know, it's a little more conservative. I actually was born and raised in Brooklyn, but I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I can okay. tell you these – these motherfuckers out here in the Midwest, boy, they they are, <laughs> <They're looking laughs> they they keep me employed a hundred percent. You know, it's it's really that's really interesting. I mean, I I because Chris you, now Josh, Chris and I both write for Killing Kittens, which is where you and I met because I got in touch with you about the Chastity article, right. and that's you know, and, and if anybody's listening, I hope well, we hope people are listening. Um, <laughs> we, we like them to check out. We'll give you all Josh's information at the end, and we'll put it on the blog as well. But um, we also want people to check out Killing Kittens because it's a, it's a great little site in the UK. And that's how I met Josh, uh, Chris. That's how that's oh, how we cool. met. I met someone and got in touch with someone who put me in touch with Josh. And Josh gave me some some good insights into chastity. And uh, fantastic. Well, it's going to take you up on that too. Yeah. So, Josh. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, when it comes to chastity, is that, it seems to me, and Chris and I have been talking about this a little bit uh, through the writing and stuff, it seems to me that that over other things has had an uptick recently oh, as yes. well. 
Absolutely. It's all about that delicate dance of control. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things that I I've noticed in, you know, the first 25 years of my life living Mm -hmm. as broad and the last however many (laughs) years living as not. uh, One of the things I can say, especially in my time in the dungeon is folks that own, you know, a penis and balls are generally that's their essence is, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my my 25 years as a broad, even though I was a Brooklyn boxing broad. I right, still really. never like grab my tit or my fallopian tube at anybody before I beat them down. Mm-hmm. But I pulled up to the wrong side of the gas pump last Tuesday and grabbed my dick three times. <laughs> <laughs> when you yeah. really think about it, it's the essence. If I can control your essence, I can control every little thing mm-hmm. about you. All I need is just that little tiny handful. That's it. Well, not, not, I, I would like to not think so tiny. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but is it because at this point we, we have so much control, you know, we can control so much around us, right? What's coming in and what's going out and the way we communicate and all that stuff. Is that why we're looking to give up control, you think? Absolutely. A lot of the people that come into my mm-hmm. space that want uh, their dick destroyed are generally people in positions of power, people mm-hmm. whose voice maybe carries a little more weight than it deserves sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And they just need to be reminded that they're little bitches. And I am so he- I'm so happy, <laughs> in fact, to just take their money and remind them of that. You're, well, you're, you're, you're very nice that way, you know, Josh. You have <laughs> giving. You're a giving person. You're a giving person, you know, and I mean that's that's important, you know. Um, Let the Pope know. Right, right. So, so tell us right now what what you guys are into, other than beyond having this great, really, and we were kidding before, but really, this really got good chock full catalog. Beyond that, what what's especially in this time? We're in a weird time, but right now, like, what are you most concentrating on in the business? Right now, we're really focusing on inclusivity, not just making sure we got stuff for, you know, big folks and small folks and gay folks and trans folks, but I got stuff for broke folks, too. And I've got (laughs) stuff for folks that maybe have body allergies or sensitivities or color issues or whatever it is. We're really pushing to being inclusive because you could be filthy and nasty, but if you can't afford it, it doesn't mean that you don't want it. So if we could make some really good kinky, nasty shit, or we could make some really good vibrating stuff or uh, intense pleasure stuff that is not going to break the bank and could be a little more financially inclusive, we are Mm -hmm. all over it. So essentially just, uh, Making sure that we could be the uh, the orgasm Oprahs, making sure everyone has access to pleasure that affirms them. I got you. That's I absolutely mean, you- wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Because so many of these toys are so cool and they're so wonderful and they're well maintained. But then you look at the price tag; it's like, oh crap! You know, yeah, it's just yeah. like you know, triple and multiple digits for something that you know. Once again, people should have the right for pleasure. So, bravo! Absolutely. So, first of all, let's say you're listening to Licking Non Vanilla here. Just to give a little plug to this, you know, <laughs> identification. Um, you know, Chris, I'm going to let you just hit this with about the the VR revolution because you're you're the tech guy when it comes to our stuff. <laughs> and I, you know, do you have any questions of that nature for Josh as far as like where where that's going? Well, I know it's really popular, and that's I know there's a whole bunch of there's a whole new breed of smart sex toys. You know, the ones oh, that yeah. work with you know uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and so forth. So, are, is that something else in your catalog, or are you just you you are you know because I know that thing's hot, but again, they're also very expensive. They usually you know the price point on those things is ridiculous. Absolutely, working on it. So we've got a whole line called Love Bots, and it's essentially. Uh, sex robotics uh, from cool. blowjob machines to fuck machines to you know the the advancements in sex tech when it comes to VR or bluetooth or the it's really uh, the advancement in what we're looking for we're not really just looking to hump and dump anymore a lot a lot of times we're looking to be taken care of and mm-hmm. it's so much easier to be taken care of when you have a thing that number one doesn't talk back, doesn't leave the toilet seat up, isn't full of shit, <laughs> that can yeah, actually yeah. do the humping 
and uh, you don't have to worry about nothing afterwards. So there's mm-hmm. a huge uptick in folks looking for companionship in their oh, yes. solo pleasure. Yeah, right. look at the sex doll world. I mean, the whole thing about like oh, yeah. you know, sex bots. You know, they're still very popular for people looking for a sexual outlet. But during the pandemic, a lot of people are just buying them to have like a human looking form to keep them company, and exactly. which I think is cool. And a lot of places are marketing them that way too, which is even cooler. Absolutely. You know, I don't ever, when it comes to uh, helping folks figure out how to uh, either sell or buy sex dolls, I just refer to them as companions. Because when you really mm-hmm. think about it, it's not like your normal stroker. You know, your stroker, you hump it and dump it and put it back in the, the nightstand. But when it comes to a whole full body apparition, you got to bathe it and dress it and mm-hmm. comb its hair. And it's a, it's an unconditional active service, which is would mm-hmm. give folks satisfaction outside of the sexual part of things, which is pretty awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they do things, everything from like doing you know, the dress and the makeup and, you know, the whole the whole nine yards, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And I think it's so cool that there's like a whole community of people who are sharing like makeup tips, you know, or, absolutely. you know, how to do this, that, and the other thing. I think it's really very exciting. Absolutely. You know, it also helps people really feel connected during a time when right now, especially if you're immune compromised or you live in an area of, you know, high infection rates, when you may not feel as comfortable going out back into hookup culture or going Mm -hmm. back out into dating society or sex society, because you can't really bone with the mask on. Not super (laughs) sexy. Uh, Absolutely. (laughs) So it it lets people feel connected when they're feeling so disconnected and Mm -hmm. segregated from everyone and everything else. Yeah. And talk about inclusivity. I mean, the sex dolls used to be just pretty much, you know, female equipment equipped. I guess that's the right way of saying it. Um, But now it's like, you name it, there is somebody out there making a sex doll that is every combination of every kind of possible physiological, you know, and genital combination, which I think is so exciting. I mean, sometimes I'll look at these ones that I think like, oh, this is a mainstream sex doll site. And they say they have a whole trans line or they have a, you know, a whole different thing of fantasy characters, which I think is like really exciting. Oh, absolutely. But um, yeah, that's that's really cool. And I have to say, it's like I also like a lot of the stuff on your catalog, you know, because a lot of people are kind of turned off by the heavy duty. So I love the fact we're seeing so many colors, sex toys that don't look like sex yeah, toys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so if you're feeling intimidated, you know, it's like, oh, this is one that actually looks like you don't know what it looks like, but it doesn't look like a sex toy. Yeah, <laughs> those cute little jewel butt butt plugs and stuff. That stuff. Oh, you yep. know, for, the, for those who are not well versed or a little like like Chris says, a little skittish, that stuff can make certainly. Int- introduce you to to things that maybe you wouldn't try normally. You know, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely. One of the things in that jeweled uh, butt plug line that just came out is actually a line of gemstones. So I've okay. been seeing a lot of really. Be- they're called yoni eggs, and they're gemstone mm-hmm. eggs for your vajay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here's the de- here's the deal: they're super spendy, and not everyone can afford a full amethyst this dildo uh, mm-hmm. or butt plug. So these gemstone plugs, they're metallic plugs that have the uh, natural gemstone on the end. So it's oh. amethyst or tiger's eye or red jasper. Again, right. in that move to bring the benefits of uh, what folks are looking for into the inclusivity of affordability. Because if, you know, you could want to rose quartz up your asshole all day, but if you can't afford it, it's not yeah, going to do anybody any good. <laughs> Well, you know, I think this is important. I mean, I I, I don't know if I've talked to a to a toy producer yet that's that's mentioned the price points, you know, and how how some things are just way just the price point is pejorative. They just you can't do it. Mm-hmm. And I think that yeah. this is an important thing to recognize that you I mean you want to make money, you want to sell product, but you know you, you sell a hundred of something at a at a lower price is is sometimes better than selling. Three of the thing, you know, um, at a higher exactly. price, and more well, people. You know, that's honestly how you stay uh, in. Uh, how you stay in competition, how you stay ahead of the game when it comes to Amazon and all these other places folks can buy sex toys that yes. aren't uh, reputable sources. This is the way that you stay on top of that is we want to make sure that folks can afford it. I want you to be able to afford to fuck yourself the way you want to fuck yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is my goal. 
<laughs> well, that's my mantra. I've always said that. You know, I can't have a mantra made. Don't we, have, Chris, don't we have hats made up like that? That's it. That's it. Fuck yourself the way you I, want I to agree. fuck. Yeah. And that's the thing. that into my tombstone. Take that's it exactly. Josh that's says. That's about your catalog, too. It's like, you know, it's like the problem is if you look for affordable stuff, you get the, the bad stuff. So when you have like higher end stuff, but also the low, the, the stuff is more affordable. I think that's really very exciting because, again, you don't have to worry about like, you know, getting the stuff that will hurt you. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Well, I mean, this is uh, – this is. I mean, we go on all day here with you, Josh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, what we're going to do, Josh, I, I, what we always do, and just before we log off, we'll, we'll get you to, to, to give us a little uh, – you know, to shout out all the places we could find you. But I'm going to give all that information in, in our blog once this show goes up. And you'll, you'll get the link to it and all that stuff. But for now, mm-hmm. let's tell the people where they can find your, your stuff, where they can go and find uh, your products. You can go ahead and find our products. A uh, really good place online when you're looking is ExtremeRestraints.com. Mm-hmm. If you uh, go to your local adult store, just ask the clerk for anything from XR Brands, and they're going to mm-hmm. be able to show you uh, a ridiculous amount of okay. sex toys and products for sure. sure. Very good. Well, uh, Josh, I, I don't know. I, we can't thank you enough, really. Come, yeah, coming by on LinkedIn and Vanilla to give us give us your insight, and uh, we it's wonderful when we have people on that we you know that we like to begin with. But it's especially nice to have somebody you like, and and it's so goddamn informative, you know. <laughs> um, Thanks. You I know, told you, I'm uh, not good at much else. So look no. at me, Ma. Look at right. me. <laughs> right. Let's put on a show, you know. But uh, no, it's great, Josh. We really. Um, we thank you so much, and we're gonna we're gonna get everybody over to the over to the site, and we'll like I said, Absolutely. we'll do our due diligence on our end, you know. Absolutely, um, and if anyone is ever interested in uh, following along for our sex ed content, you could find me on all the places at the Dad Bod Dom. Pretty okay. easy, uh, you know. I'm a dad with a dad bod, and I'm a pro dom. So the Dad <laughs> Bod Dom. There you go. Works perfect. perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so, Josh. Thank you so Absolutely, much. Absolutely, Josh. Thank you so thank much. You. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon, and we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you. You've got it. Keep it kinky, my friends. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, buddy. <laughs> Bye-bye. What do, you, what do you think, Chris? I mean, we, we got to go over here and get some stuff. Right? We have We have talked to so many great we do. people. And we do. every we do. single one. I mean, Josh was fantastic. I mean, this is someone I want to, you know, you know, let's, let's hang out with, them with masks nowadays and so forth. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. they were absolutely delightful. So, you know, I, I, it's just one of those things, Chris, where you just, you, you know, I, I always know, I mean, humble enough, we're both humble enough to know we don't know everything. Oh, no. Well, I know um, Jack shit. <laughs> well, Jack, Jack, and I know Jill. But, um, I know Jack so and we, shit. That's about it. Jill, yeah, up, up, up with a pail of water. But, but you know, how you do it is you, you listen to these, you know, we get people on who can get, I mean, when we do our kink uh classes we're always taking questions and there's sometimes people know a lot more than we do you know they'll, mm-hmm. they'll they'll chime in with some stuff and uh this is why i like to have these people on because um you know beyond what our, for our own edification it's nice to be able to lend a hand to other people listening you know people and i, I you know I, like he said too you know there's a lot of people out there that, that are either experimenting and they can hurt themselves right because we say this all the time mm-hmm. right or there's a lot of people out there that are afraid to because of that re- very reason, and they're cautious, and they, you know, and like you said, you made a good point of this. They see something online, they're like, "Geez, that's like a hundred dollar sex toy. I, I don't want to be playing with that for the first time," you know. So um, I think you know what Josh is. Josh is especially interested in when he says in, in you know, inclusive. He mentioned the price thing, which I haven't heard anybody say before, you know. I'm so glad he brought that up because that makes yeah. a major problem. I mean, not major problem, but I'd say it is a problem because, you know, it's like if you're looking for something that's affordable, you know, sometimes you do searches on places like Amazon and then you do it by price. Well, the problem is the, the cheap stuff can be really crappy. So mm-hmm. I really applaud what he's doing because he has a site that's full of like all full range of stuff. So, you know, right. it has a certain degree of quality. So when things are more affordable, you know, it's not a piece of crap. It's just mm-hmm. more affordable, which I think is right. really admirable because trying to find some of these and, you know, some of these toys are fantastic. But I was looking at one the other day. It was like 350 bucks. 
It's yeah, just it's like, crazy. I'm sorry, it better like make me dinner and, you know, call me a cab yeah. and, you know, write right. me a lump okay. on it for $300. I mean, yeah, especially I since you can't return these things. So if you buy something, you know, and even if you, as long as it's still in the box and sealed, you're fine. But a lot of places will right. not take up, take them back for good reason because they can be contaminated and you can't, you know, yeah, right. you can't medically sterilize them. Um, right. But yeah, it's like, so if you, if you decide, oh, I'm going to risk it and spend 500 bucks on a sex toy and then find out you don't like it, you're, you're well you're fucked <laughs> even without the sex toy yeah <laughs> and I, you know I, I think there's been enough there's been enough cases we, we know this for sure i mean i was sent something a long time ago um and i won't say the name of the company i don't know where they're at at this point but it was this very high endy kind of uh device that you kind of put yourself in as we say and then you watch the video and then it triggered the, the device oh, to okay, masturbate yeah. you and the dev- I I don't know how they sent me one because it's very expensive, and between the the device and then the the the, um, the server and all that shit, it was very expensive. And I don't know, you know, they they were going gangbusters for about a year, and then all of a sudden, boom, nothing. And I think it was because they priced themselves out of the market. I I think that people were like, well, that's a great thing and it's really neat, but like it's just way too much fucking money, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about the sex dolls. Some of those sex dolls are unbelievable. Believable, but they are pricey. Oh, they absolutely. Are very pricey. Oh, and for good yeah. reason. Some of them are really worth the price. I mean, if you look at some oh, of the ones that are coming absolutely. from real doll, you know, Abyss Creation. Exactly. Those, are, right. those exactly. are the Ferrari of sex dolls. But yes. you know, it's like I was amazed. The other day I was looking at um Ali Pre- AliExpress, I think it's what it's called. I'm I'm mispronounced that horribly, I apologize. Yeah. It's one of these, you know, mega marts out of, of East Asia. And okay. I love it because they have all kinds of stuff, but they have a whole section on sex dolls, and some of them are remarkably yeah. affordable. I don't know what you're going to get for the price, but it's right. still kind of cool that we have ones that are more affordable. But, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there. I got a couple that I've reviewed where it's just like, you know, a lot of places don't want you to list the price, but, you know, I do it as part of my research. I'm looking like, oh, seriously? Come on. I mean, they're charging this much for this thing? I mean, come, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, and you could, you could certainly go the low end, and sometimes the low end stuff is great. I mean, sometimes it's made great. And it's just a company like 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 Josh's that offer some really quality stuff for a lower price. And then other times, as you well know, the quality isn't great, and you 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 know you run the risk of like maybe hurting yourself a little a little bit to to a you know a larger degree. You know, mm-hmm. so you want to be careful with that stuff. Luckily, across the board, I'd say most of the things you're getting nowadays, no matter what you're spending, they're you know they're free of all all the chemicals and stuff that used to be put in this stuff. So you're not that way. You're not really in in danger because there's kind of been kind of like across the board um, regulation on that, but. You know, you and I both know. I mean, how many times have you said, well, you know, you can go to go out and buy this thing or you can make it even better and for cheaper. You know, mm-hmm. but there's plenty of toys that we've shown, like uh, tit torture toys and, and, you know, spanking implements that could be, you know, just as easily found if you just walk into the walk into your kitchen and get a wooden spoon. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, I think probably sometime, not necessarily right now, because right now you can't really do it. It's not safe. But I think in the future we're yeah. probably going to see 3D printed sex toys. Oh, I'm uh, sure that's true. You know, right I'm now, sure they're true. not safe. You can't don't use them. Well, right, right. Unless, no, you're I'm making, sure unless you're using a 3D printer to make a mold that you then pour the resin into or the silicone. But right now, the material is not body safe. But eventually, we will. So you know, mm-hmm. sooner rather than later, we'll be able to make customized toys. So you can say like, yeah, I yeah. want that on. I want. I want. I want it or don't want it to be smart. You know, I want it to interact. I want it to be this long, that shape, and then boink, it shows up in your mailbox, which I think is going to be really cool. But right now, we're just not quite there yet yeah yeah i got you now just to remind you again you're listening to licking non-vanilla what else you're listening to that would give you this kind of insight <laughs> and this kind of this kind of uh ribald uh repartee between two incredibly handsome talented individuals <laughs> you're not going to find that anywhere else except here on licking that's licking non-vanilla my friends okay. um i think yeah i i just i at this point you know, there's there's there is a veter- veritable plethora, and I don't know if there's any other kind of plethora than veritable, but <laughs> there is a veritable plethora of stuff out there and places to get stuff. Oh yeah, there's um, tons of places. It's, it's it's amazing, and it's just like yeah. I'm so glad that you know we had this conversation with chat with Josh because it's like I'm going to use you know them as a resource now because it's like sometimes I'm looking for like places to recommend it's like that's a, yeah. definitely going to be on the recommended list there's some fantastic stuff but yeah it's like it used to be like you know we have those horrible stiff plastic vibrators Hello. that got discolored and cracked 
and you know just absolutely horrible it's just like ew and it's like that was only like a couple of decades ago it seems like and now suddenly we yeah. have like you know all these state of the art fancy dancy you know inter- yeah. in networkable you know ultra high you know tech kind of stuff i just you know think right. it's a, an exciting time for sex toys as long as they're not too expensive <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely well i think what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this one up and uh because we're just we're just we're just too wonderful to keep going on. That's the problem. <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna get this in the can, as they say. Could I, if I could say that in mixed company, uh, from what we just <laughs> talked about. Um, but we want everybody to go to XR Brand and they yes. want to check out what Josh has got over there. And uh, Josh, thank you, Josh, again. Uh, we'll, we'll, and as, as we always do, we'll get it up on the blog and give you information. And then uh, and then we'll just me and Chris will just continue to be as wonderful as we always are. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so let's let's say goodbye for now from Looking On Vanilla. This has been Ralph Greco Jr., as he always is, and that's <laughs> over there. Is, uh, who's over there? I'm over here. Chris, others known as M. Christian. Right, but you have to call him Sir. <laughs> and, uh, all right, we'll see, you, we'll see you next time on Looking On Vanilla. <laughs> Bye-bye. And visit us on the web at www.lickingnonvanilla.com.